I think to start with, um, doing a bit of a, a baseline assessment of, of where you're at across um, each of the E, S and G. Um, and to realise that ESG is nothing new really, it's everyone does different parts of the E, S and G. It's just understanding what what you're doing at the moment um, and looking at the data as well. Data is a big part of that. So looking at um, the data sources, the systems and processes around the data that you've got for each of the, the E, S and G. <coughs> and understanding what the, the key risks are and expectations of stakeholders, as I mentioned before, what stakeholders are looking to have reported on and disclosed. Um, and then also looking at um, the people you've got, so looking at roles and responsibilities for different parts of reporting on the, the ES and the G. And then coming up with a strategy or a roadmap to work out, uh, to bring all that together really, to work out how to pull the data together, get the people involved, the right people involved, um, and move towards developing a, an ESG or sustainability type report. Um, and then implementing that strategy and uh, getting to the re a report that the stakeholders, uh, meet stakeholder expectations. Um, and probably final step is just looking at um, assurance possibly as well as can be an important part of that to really get the, the confidence in the, re the reporting, um, the stakeholder confidence in what is being reported is complete and accurate and, and really meets their expectations. Yeah, part of it probably is in that education piece. So um, making sure people are aware that uh, ESG isn't new, as I mentioned before. Uh, it's just understanding uh, what is required to be reported on and disclosed. There have been a lot of different frameworks around for ESG and sustainability reporting as well, the GRI and SASB and all these different ones. So agreeing on the framework up front sort of helps overcome some of those barriers. Uh, and the new sustainability reporting standards on the way are intended to overcome a lot of that and add or build in more comparability across organisations as well. Yeah, probably some of the, the bigger challenges we see, uh, and it's true for not only ESG, but reporting and analysis generally is access to the data. So do we actually have the data? Um, in some cases, yes, but it's in 50 different <laughs> systems or you know, only one or, or worse, there's 20 different versions of the truth and so on. Uh, probably in that situation is we would recommend start and start somewhere. Uh, get a get a line in the sand if you like and then start to evolve thereafter but uh, probably the biggest challenge from from our side is, is just access to data once we have the data we can ingest it we can model it and we can do everything with it um, but so there's quite a large work piece of work up front that we often uh, work with our clients on is just just doing exactly that identifying data ensuring its reliability availability and so on I'll just elaborate further to what Adam said, I think, is that definitely we know people join organisations and stay with organisations because there's a personal alignment to the purpose. So if you've got great people who love what they're doing and it doesn't feel like work and they're putting in their best, they're putting in that discretionary effort, obviously you're going to have a more profitable, better business. So as human beings, we can just see incredible results because we're actually caring about one another and caring around the planet. So yeah, that would be from my perspective. Yeah, as I said earlier, it's uh, emissions and carbon emissions are purely a function of how much energy you've used. So uh, if, if what you're able to achieve is a reduction in your carbon emissions, by definition, you're using less energy and therefore by definition it's costing you less. So if purely from a, as I said before, a below the line thing, it, it's a cost opportunity. Also, um, maybe not an ESG thing necessarily, but through the use of analytics, well done analytics and so on, if you can start to identify uh, sales and marketing opportunities, for example, you have a direct influence on your top line. So compliance aside, now I think actually a lot often these things re re rarely stick well if it's purely a compliance motivation. If there is a business compelling a business motivation, it will drive itself. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> similar themes, I think, really. Uh, I think as Adam mentioned earlier, it's, um, it's just makes good biz business sense, really. It's good business practice to, it can help improve uh, costs, reduce costs, 
uh, but also an impact on the environment um, by having good environmental practices and being able to report and monitor that impact. Impact on the community for the, the S side of things. Um, yeah, I think it all overall just really makes good business sense to, to be able to measure the impact, um, the financial impact and the, the social and governance impact. Mm -hmm.